Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for everyone. Today is a bit of a mixed bag. I don't know really what to title this video, but we've made progress. Uh, about that much progress. That's right, you heard keyboard clickety clacks that led to this motor spinning exactly half a rotation. So let's talk about how we got closed loop control computer control, and this mess of a system. Let's talk about how we got this started. Okay, I know we just spent an entire video talking about me failing to get Modbus working, but I do have a really cool setup. I was looking around and apparently there's this Doclight program that is very cool. And I have it in monitoring mode, and this is the free version, so I can't like save my setup or anything, but I never intend to use it again after this system works, so I don't think that's a problem. What it allows me to do is hook up two other COM port devices. So that's a uh, COM 12 and 14, and both of them are receive only, and I'm receiving both halves of the transmission. So I have one receiving what's coming through on COM 4, I have another one transmitted by COM4, those are both being recorded, and then that shows up as a conversation here, kind of like Wireshark. So you can see as I've been debugging, things have been working or not working or coming on, getting all kinds of crazy responses as I'm attempting to debug. At least we're mostly sending and receiving the right thing. Sometimes. I had these sniffers that were connected and listening to the Modbus, and these were getting the right data. But then when I looked at the one that was actually controlling the TX enable, it was getting all these weird leading and lagging zeros. And I was like, what in the world? I've now seen strong correlation. Oh yeah, I'm hooked up to the actual bus. Debugging blind is terrible. So I'm able to see the call and response. Five milliseconds per division here. I think I found root cause for the literal days of pain. And the reason why is because apparently the FTDI headers don't check parity bits. So there'd be little glitches on the UART lines from when the TX enable was enabled or disabled, and it would read that glitch as an extra byte coming in. So now I'm running on an actual like microcontroller that's checking the parity bits and throwing away invalid data, and now everything seems to work great. So what is happening? We have a microcontroller that is able to send and receive Modbus and in true, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, Murphy's Law, whatever, but in true uh, fashion, the program that we were using to read and write the COM ports does not support this style of COM port, the, the USB virtual host nonsense. So that's pretty frustrating but it's fine. So I told you I wouldn't come back until it worked. It works. We are able to read and write holding registers. And the whole point of me building this out is because I needed a way to communicate data from something to the motor modules. And now I can communicate to the motor modules so I can build the whole motor control architecture on top of Modbus, and I know that it will now work. So we're talking Modbus. It's time to communicate data that we care about. It's time to read and write Modbus in a way that tells the motor to move and then links into all the control loop stuff, and the control loop stuff is in this same build. So it should work. I couldn't not demo this. So, I'm going to uh, show you something pretty cool. I have the scope hooked up to monitor the UART data, rather the RS-45 data. I'm looking only at the positive half, so you know, not plotting both halves of the complement, but you can imagine what that looks like. It's the opposite, and we're zoomed way out. And what I have on the screen is two complementary functions. Obviously the one running the motor controller, this is our control loop, this is pulling in a bunch of parameters. And I defined a loose uh, code structure, 
or a, a register map, uh, it looks like that, and I'm pretty sure that's what I implemented. So you had a P term, an I term, a P term, an I term, so you can set your speed and position PI parameters over Modbus. And then it has a nudge register, and I ignored register six. Basically, that nudge registers the amount of uh, tenths of degrees. So you can tell it the uh, value of one would be move one tenth of a degree when I hit nudge. And then every time you set this register zero to a value of one, it will nudge the motor by nudge degrees. This is again gated by hitting go or hitting anything really. So you put something in the COM port, hit enter. It says, hey, you haven't initialized. And you can see, there we go, uh, the controller is initializing those registers. And then in the serial port, what uh, the responses that you see in the serial port are the hex representation of what was returned from the slave. So that would allow for debugging communications. Okay, now that's not the fun part. The fun part is what happens next. Every time I give it a new serial character, it'll set that nudge bit. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind that awful transient response. Oh, it's set to half a rotation. <laughs> okay, whatever. I set the nudge parameter to half a rotation. Uh, did I actually? Yes, it's set to half a rotation. Cool. So this is where it's kind of fun because in theory, right, this would be getting commands somehow. This is really just a test program that will allow for testing motor modules. Um, but I intend to have more information be available. This was pretty cool. To find a little bit of success after a few days of frustration is always satisfying. And I'm really excited for the next steps of this project. I'll make sure to stay tuned and keep watching it for everyone because this is going to get really cool really fast. And... I'm so excited to share this series with you. Thank you to those who have decided to support EE Forever directly, either by being a YouTube or Patreon member. Your support goes a long way to make sure that this can be accessible to great people like you. If you're liking this series, uh, give me a thumbs up or let me know down in the comments because, uh, yeah, it'll be sooner than later where hopefully some of you will be able to get your hands on a kit just like this to spin a motor for whatever it is that you need to do. As always, I hope you learned something great today and I hope to see you again soon. I'm assuming that I'll have something up on GitHub. Uh, so I guess keep your eyes out for that on our GitHub repo. I'll put links to everything down in the description. It's gonna be a lot of links. This one's pretty cool. So thanks for watching and thanks for staying till the end. Bye.